Hey guys, it's Kelly in California and I'm here with some special guests. My Tyler. Tyler. My Tyler. <laughs> my nephew Tyler and Josh. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> so we were just talking about you're a plant lover. Yeah, yeah. And I... tell us about your involvement with plants over time. So I, uh, back in 2020, or 2019, sorry, I started working up at uh, Isley Nursery, Isley's Nursery up in Auburn. It's a small nursery that's been around since 1932, mm. and um, small family run uh, by the Isley family. And uh, in 2020, they were uh, bought out by Matsudas, which now does uh, everything for Green Acres, which mm. has about eight stores up in uh, Northern California. And uh, yeah, I worked in soil amendment and nursery work and just kind of did everything. Uh, I used to do gardening and stuff before that, but I found out I could get paid to do it. So <laughs> yeah. then uh, that was a pretty easy, you know, getting paid to be outside and play in the dirt, you know. And so, so you've always had a love for plants then for oh, yeah. a long time. Yeah, my grandma, she had a green thumb and she passed that on to me. And your, yeah. your parents, both of your parents garden? Um, my dad, my dad barbecues more than he uh, gardens. <laughs> I'm but, okay uh, with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, my mom, my mom's a great gardener. Uh, she just likes to, I, no, no offense to my mom, but she likes to overwater a little bit, I think. Uh, <laughs> we do that because yeah. we think we're giving, we're yeah. giving those plants. She's trying to nurture yeah. it and, you know, um, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I, me and my mom, you know, every year we do a garden up in Loomis and, mm. you know, mostly like a summer veg. Uh, you know, tomatoes, peppers, squash, stuff like that. I'll, I'll do a, I'll uh, uh, till the soil and, and just plant uh, some stuff by seed, but mostly stuff by just like, you know, um, you know, just small starters. And you're trying and to stuff. get Tyler into gardening as well or well, into plant loving. Well, you gave me some succulents last time. I yes. Was and they're alive. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's half the alive? battle. Yeah, they're, they're alive. They're alive. They're just a little, they're a little burnt because it's so dry. It's so dry and hot we up where we are. A, like so. Well, even here, I thing, mean, so it's yeah. I, yeah. I had somebody comment on one of my videos because I was wearing a jacket when I did video and it's the summer. Right. <laughs> and, and, and are you wearing a jacket in the summer? And, <laughs> and I'm like, and um, where I live on the coast, <laughs> it's, it's cool in the mornings and, yeah. and it tra changes drastically. It's so cool in the mornings, and you guys know because you've been spending some time in Monterey, which mm -hmm. is the same. Oh, yeah. Um, just a hop, skip, and a jump away. And so cold in the morning, I do need a jacket, at least a light one. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, in the middle of the day, yeah, you know, three. you strip down. <laughs> yeah. uh, but then at night, you you're, yeah. you're back yeah. to that jacket again. Yeah. yeah. So it's amazing, but it gets dry here. It gets really mm -hmm. dry. You guys have the extreme heat, though. Yeah, yeah, 110. 110, plus. 115. So how do you guys keep things alive with the plants? I mean, we just put up the, the sunshade. It's 50% mm -hmm. in our little garden. Put up a little yeah. UV screen yeah. to cut cut some of that out. And I feel like that's helped a lot. Yeah, we yeah. just, I, we just I'm, I'm starting him easy with some some herbs, you know, some uh, Genovese, sweet Genovese basil, some uh, thyme, oregano, and uh, and then just like, just for, just for fun, I, I got like a little calabrocoa. You know, um, just like a little uh, a pink pin pinwheel one. That's that's a true plant lover, just for fun. <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> you know, I thought it looked, I thought it looked, I thought it looked cute. You know, and um, yeah, you know, it's they're all doing good. Um, they're doing a lot better now that we yeah. we put up that that shade cloth. We don't have to um, water them as much, and they aren't getting as you know as burnt. Of course, like the basil, the basil is such a good companion plant for uh, tomatoes because. One, you got your, your, there's your meal. Your basil. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there's your tomato sauce, your basil and your tomato. Thing, yeah. But they love heat. They love the sun, yeah. you know. So that the basil, it's kind of funny. It's like growing. It's like a sunflower. It's like growing out mm -hmm. uh, off the patio towards the it's sun. It's huge, too. It's huge, it was, yeah. It's already a couple like, of feet tall, yeah. But yeah, we talked about, big. like, I'm not much of a fruit and veg. I mean, they're, in the cool seasons, I do. Like, I, mm -hmm. I grow salad stuff. Yeah. You know, because I like salad. A lot of people awesome. don't, but I, I do yeah. kale and lettuce, kale. green onions, and, you know, mm -hmm. the stuff that I actually eat, because it's just me. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I grow. And 
So right now there's nothing in there. I did have something growing, but then I got some really bad compost and it killed everything. Mm, That's sad. Yeah, um, so, and I've got my focus on the pretties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, you're doing a great job. So, it's and it's hard, but it is hard in California. You get to this drought part, that mid summer, late summer, yeah. Even into the fall. Yeah. I mean, I was saying before that um, in one of my videos that we, we can get until the very last of October before we get rain. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I remember back in 2022, I remember this day. It's weird. But back in October 14th of 2022, um, I was at Isley's and we were, it was during, you know, pretty heavy in the poinsettia season because poinsettias, as you know, are like a Christmas plant. You know, people like those for Thanksgiving and Christmas, but we actually get them started the last week of July or the first week of August because we get them from cuttings and then we just nurture them and nurse them in a nursery. And to, to get them, you know, we put them in six inch, eight inch, and 10 inch. And I remember October 14th, that day, the high was like 86. Oh, wow. And that was, that was mid October. And I was crazy. like, oh my goodness, oh, like it's almost 90. And, uh, you know, thank goodness for the, the greenhouses. We get the wet walls and the fans. We can Colors, control the temperature. Kind of, yeah. But it's like if we didn't have the greenhouses. I can't imagine how much that costs to run a system like that. Uh, I can't imagine the water costs for the drip and just the hoses. And because then, we went our red and during the holiday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a sight to see. I didn't, I, I've never realized um, just how much of an operation it is just to, just to grow something as simple as like a, you know, some, some dianthus or some zinnias or some marigolds, you know. It's yeah, just, in it's, bulk. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, in different, you know, four-inch, six-inch, six-pack, uh, you know, quartz. There's all different, you know, sizes that you do these same plants in. And um, it's a lot of work, you know, amending the soil just to, to get the soil right. You have and, to really love plants to, yeah. to go into that kind of business to begin with mm -hmm. and to keep it going. Because I can't imagine, imagine the overhead with the cost of running something oh, like that mm -hmm. is quite quite a bit. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I grow well. a lot of things from seed, um, you know, like I was telling you my status. It is one of my favorites now. Mm -hmm. um, and just different things I grow from seed and scatter seed, mm -hmm. you know, my annuals, I just will throw, you know, annual seed out and a lot of it. And lavender I've gotten to grow from seed and mm -hmm. um, yeah. succulents though. Um, the, the thing about succulents is that all year long, there's a succulent that's in their growing part, their growing season. Like, yeah. you know, some go yeah. dormant, but then other ones will come alive and yeah. come awake and start growing. And, the nice thing about succulents for me is that when everything else is like looking so sad and depressed, I've got my <laughs> yeah. succulents. They, yeah. yeah, who Love never fail me. Like, yeah. oh, you know, this is fun. Let me propagate this. I love to <laughs> propagate succulents. So yeah, it's fun. that's a lot of fun. That is fun. And that's when you just take a piece, right? And it... You can propagate by seed, but most commonly a lot of them, you can just take a cutting, snap something off, mm -hmm. let the end dry, yeah. put it in soil and it will root and grow. Yeah, the in the nursery biz, we would, uh, <clears throat> you know, we had the heart-shaped ones that we would just like, the wedge into the dirt um and then a lot of times like well i mean some stuff like you could we'd even like dip it in rooting hormone and put it but for the succulents it's like we don't even need rooting no. hormone just yeah put it in they're the so hardy <laughs> yeah and you know we do get the gophers here and the thing oh, though about yeah. the succulents is they will eat the succulent roots some of them not uh -huh. all of them but the thing is with succulents it will dry up and it will re-root yeah. where other plants won't do that yeah. you know so yeah, it's kind of neat yeah so you saw the naked ladies are growing. The pink yeah, flowers are up. Beautiful. And I was saying yeah, that such so a good. breath of fresh air to get some color back in the garden after all the other blooms die. Yeah. You know, the last ones that I have were the gladiolas and they've been gone now. And I, I actually those. are letting the stalks stay there. So that energy will go back into the bulb for next year. Yeah. But I'm ready to cut those off. It's so hard to keep them on as long as I can. Yeah. But... But to see the naked ladies come up, that's that's nice. I noticed one of your foxgloves was uh, was starting to come back, and I saw some some little trumpet flowers. It's it's slowly starting to come. Yeah, back. Yeah, you know? I'm excited about that because it was my first time having a foxglove. I put seed out, and you know when I when I, at first I thought it was a lamb's ear. 
because oh. the coloration, the color of the leaves. Yeah. Um, and then as it grew, I'm like, that's, that's not lamb's ear. Cause it was <laughs> shooting up. And I'm like, what is that? And then, you know, plat ID app and oh, Fox Glove, and sure enough. And I was so excited because, you know, it reminds me of Ireland. Because oh, they grow, yeah. they they naturalized in Ireland, and so oh, wow. they will be growing wild there. Wow. They're so easy to grow. That's They'll awesome. They'll grow by themselves and na out in nature. Um, so it reminds me of Ireland, and I go to Ireland once a year for three Very weeks. Cool. Last year, twice a year. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but the and then I bought one at a nursery as well, and um, but the other one got to be eight feet tall that stock, oh, yeah. and I cut it off where you're talking about. Yeah, and yeah, it's regrowing, so I'm I'm excited they're about like, that. They're like sunflowers, they get really tall. It's oh, it's pretty good. cool. Yeah, yeah, I saved the the stock so that I can you know let the seeds dry and put them out. So hopefully next year I'll get more. Yeah, yeah, I'm some excited. more volunteers. Yeah, I think they're biennials, <laughs> meaning they may bloom more than once a year, but I'm not positive about that. So don't yeah, <laughs> I, I should know better. I'm not. I'm not sure, because um, a lot of the stuff that we would sell. I mean, we would get. Uh, you know, we didn't grow uh, uh, foxglove digitalis. We we mostly did veg, uh, fruits, vegetables, veg. Uh, poinsettias we, we grew a lot of annuals and biannuals but some of the some of the more like um, fancy plants we'd call them you know like hibiscus or for us foxglove or some of these other ones we would get actually imported from like monrovia or proven winners mm -hmm. pw mm -hmm. um, and we would put them out in the retail under shade cloth and we would just maintain them until they were sold right but we didn't actually get to grow them i mean we grew snapdragon and and yeah. some of these these other cool ones the primrose it's and, funny and how some years in the garden i don't know if you ask your mom about this <laughs> but some years will be good years for certain kinds of plants like sweet peas like yeah you'll have a really good sweet pea year but the next one it will suck yeah and you're like what the heck i did the same thing you know but something was different that. um and so that's what i mean have, did you notice that in the nursery year too that some things would just thrive better some years than others um in the nursery uh so it's interesting <clears throat> you say in the nursery no everything was pretty constant because only because we were able to control the the how much perlite mulch osmocote you know which is plant food uh, uh vermiculite whatever like we could you know the thing about greenhouses is such a controlled, like we can control the temperature, the humidity, soil and the everything. soil and everything. Mm -hmm. So actually it was pretty constant. We didn't really have, we would have uh, pests or like aphids or some kind of, uh, you know, uh, black ink blotch that would get on the basil, which is like a, a terminal thing. You can't really, once that takes hold, you can't really do anything. You just have to throw them out and just hope that, you know, just reseed some more basil and just hope that you don't get that. Uh, there was stuff like that that was uncontrollable. But um, everything grew fine. But I have noticed in like up in Loomis, uh, in our in my parents' garden, last year our squash were great. We did gold bar squash. Our tomatoes were off the hook. Um, you know our peppers were good. We did some Hungarian wax and some uh, some Isley wax. Making me hungry. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and every everything was. We did some some Kentucky pole bean. We did pole beans and, and sugar snaps, and everything was growing great. And then uh, this year, as he can attest, I have my onion patch, which is just green onion, and that's onions are doing great. Onions are doing yeah, great. great. That's it. The tomatoes. But, I got a couple. The yeah, deer same ate here. them. The squash. You think it's the soil? We got no. I th I think it's. I think Mine was the soil. I know I got soil. some bad it's compost and it yeah. wiped out everything. Yeah. So no, none of that anymore. Pretty regularly, or I don't really know. Yeah, I. I mean, I every other year, mm. I you know, and I haven't I haven't amended my soil. It's it's been a couple years, mm. and the topography on the hill that I did it in Loomis is it's kind of rocky. It doesn't have clay, so it's not retaining water, but it's a little rocky. And I think, you know, the squash. He saw the squash. They were all just they were just tendrils yeah. and we got one one squash huh. and i'm like that's not you know because when you yeah, do it's green funny zucchini how some years it's... some years are just i think it's a, a mixture of the extreme heat because we had we've had four weeks in a row at a, over 100 oh, yeah. so there's no recovery yeah. for the plants to there's to, no, humidity, there's in no the humidity in the air and then uh 
you got to water so much, but the water evaporates before it can get too deep. I even try, that's you know, the thing here is that, you know, even here when we get it where it's cool in the morning and at night and maybe get a little bit of that misty fog, it's not enough. It no, just, really it no. evaporates like that. It doesn't get into the ground. The succulents and, you know, may be able to make use of that, but mm -hmm. not the other plants. No, yeah. but yeah, some years it's funny. Some years are good for this type of plant, but not like sunflowers i had one good sunflower come up and it's a yeah. nice one yeah it's a nice yeah that is one. pretty but um last year i had sunflowers coming out the yin yang <laughs> yeah that is so yeah funny i had a lot that. last year that's funny you say that because my mom plants sunflowers from seeds and she does them in a row and there we had a row of like six to eight feet of just a wall of sunflower oh pretty and this year we have a, a sunflower that's about six feet tall and the 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 uh it's there, but it hasn't opened yet. The, it, the, the sunflower hasn't opened yet and it's ah. only one. And I'm like, this is so crazy. Cause last yeah, year, yeah. and I, I think a lot of it has to do, I was talking with, uh, uh, my buddy in Orangevale that, that farms. And he was saying that it's because of the El Nino. Mm. So we had like two to three years of like really mild summers. Like last year was super mild. We only had like a couple hundred degree days up where we're at. Um, and the winter was really wet and it has something to do with the ocean currents uh it affect the weather pattern and we had el nino for about two or three years and i think this year he was saying was the end of el nino mm -hmm. which is why you're seeing it's getting a lot hotter uh it's a lot drier you're not getting the wind or the recovery at night where it, it dips down enough to give to give these hmm. plants a, stre a so stress, so many different break. factors with the gardening. Yeah. That's like in plants, it's it's crazy, it's but like out of our control. You yeah, know? <laughs> some years are good for some things, and some and some years don't. And I mean, you have these visions. As, yeah. As a gardener, as somebody who loves plants, you always have a vision of what yeah. you want something to look like, and oh, so yeah. you strive for that. And you know, sometimes nature is just not going to play ball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man makes plans and God laughs. You know, yeah. Like, oh, how about a heat wave, you know? Or yeah. how about some uh, locusts or some deer, you know? And, and I think you were saying gophers, you should... Gophers. gophers, yeah. Gophers. They're under control in the one area where I've been putting out the gopher scrum, but I need to get some they're, more. you know, popping up in other places. Um, yeah. We'll never be 100% rid of gophers here because... They don't, I don't think they have enough natural predators. No, I don't the think Snakes so. and whatever yeah. that would yeah. feed on them. There's just not enough um, here. Hawks, whatever. I mean, we see hawks, yeah. you know, but just not. And then owls, we do get owls, but owls are night feeders. So I, I don't think gophers really come yeah. out at night. Yeah, gophers Maybe and a little deer bit, are hard, but. you know, like... Uh, you know, I, I think, you know, and I, I'm an animal lover. I love deer, you know, but it's funny because I used to, you know, not live out in the country. I used to live in a small town, but every time I'd see a deer, I'd be like, oh my gosh, a deer. Now when I see a deer, I'm like, you deer, get out of here. You know, I'm shaking my fist at him. I'm like, you better not eat my tomatoes. Uh, real fast. It gets old, you know, and, and unlike, it does. They're really, you know, majestic and stuff at a distance. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. Then you got to put a big some... fence up, you know. Well, we get deer here. Right. Yeah. Oh, and I, I bet, have yeah. that whole one side that is not fenced at all. And it would cost a lot of money to fence that. Right. You so fence, I, right. yeah, so they, and there's a fruit tree right there and it just uh -oh. got done um, <laughs> fruiting out. And so the deer, I had visitors, but they mostly were eating that and not staying. They ate my sweet peas, which were uh, right there. Yeah. Um, and they eat the, um, the uh, rock purslane, which are the hot pink flowers oh, that right. you see, okay. that um, oh, yeah. succulent. Oh, they cool. will eat the flowers off of those, and so you'll see the stalk, just the stalk here. Oh, no, yes. You know but I'm happened. shocked, and you know, I shouldn't say anything, but this yellow um, bloomer right behind the screen. <sighs> oh, yeah. It's never been able to bloom because they eat them. Oh, wow. This is the first year, and so, you know, tonight Knock on wood. they will. <laughs> <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> That's what, how it happens. Yeah. But the company that makes gopher scram also makes deer scram. Oh, nice. So, which they're all natural how repellents. Work, yeah. What's it, that? How does it work? Is it like a... Well, with the gopher scram, you put it out, it's gran granulars, and you put it out and you water it in for 20 minutes. It's got oils and different other ingredients that oh, okay. are re yeah. naturally repel. They don't like the good. smell. They don't like the oil because it's digestively oh, good. not good for them. And, yeah. 
whatever. Um, but you have to keep on it. it you have to be persistent with right. it. So the Deer Scram, I don't know. I haven't used the product, so I assume it's probably the same so, kind of thing as far mm. as the smell. Yeah. So you probably, uh, ma Grandma, Grandma in Montana ordered some. <laughs> So she's she's gonna she's gonna be trying that because her hostas are gonna be blooming and oh, and hostas, she's like yeah. or they have and yeah, she said I I'm shocked they haven't eat them because eaten them yeah because the hostas and deer yeah <laughs> they love them gosh I I mean up in Loomis we've got quite a bit of uh, gopher issues and obviously deer issue. Um, so I'm gonna have to look out for that. The gopher scram and the deer scram. Scram, yeah, the scram. There, it's that. epic repellents. Epic repellents. Okay. Right, and yeah, you absolutely. can go to their website and order, um, or look it up, look into it. Epic um, I don't have any experience with the deer scram yet, but that could be in the works. Uh, I talked to the guys at Epic are, are really good and working with me. So you know, probably if I had a problem, real bad problem with deer. You know, I would try the. I would definitely try the Epic brand repellent to see. You know, yeah. see how it does. It's good that you got like the sacrificial fruit tree. It's yeah, like, just yeah. Keep them over there. Yeah, and they used happy, to bed you know. down by under those oak trees in the corner by the fence. Oh, in the and shade. Yeah. They didn't this year, so I'm thinking about throwing some cactus down there to keep. Oh the yeah. That Maybe from some happening. pyrocantho, some big, yeah. old, big old needles. And keep them, keep it's kind of mean, but yeah, I know. Yeah, there's, a, there's a lot more countryside here for them to camp out. So, yeah. yeah. That's so, true. yeah. So the heat, you guys have the extreme heat there. And yeah. so what is your mom? Is she like me? She likes her pretties too? Yeah. My mom, oh, my mom's favorite plant is a hydrangea, mm. which I uh, suck at them. I up. suck. I was just going to say they're the most finicky. I plant. love them. I love them. Yeah, no, hydrangeas are great. Uh, up where we're at, I think it's just so hot that they burn. They burn like the the uh, the blooms are so pretty if you can keep them if you can keep them watered and in like partial shade or shade, but uh, where we are, they just get burnt and they get crispy. Yeah. And they get dry, they get like that that brown yeah. dry, you know what I mean? And it just doesn't look good. And uh, Every time uh, I've tried to do hydrangeas, it's just been really hard. But my dad's favorite plant is a gardenia. Okay. And I, mm -hmm. it's more of a shrub. And that one, I actually have a really... They I have, smell good. They smell great. I yeah. love the smell. Um, Something about that and the jasmine. We were talking yeah, about my jasmine. It jasmine. smells really good. I it's done jasmine. now, blooming. It's that but sweet it's vanilla, got, oh, yeah, that sweet smell. Like honeysuckles. Yeah. Like, you know, honeysuckle yeah, grows wild here in places. Mm -hmm. And as kids, you know, you used to pull the flower mm -hmm. off and you could suck yep. that it, nectar. It was so good. <laughs> yep. At his apartments, they got a, a bunch of purple vinca minor. Mm -hmm. It's the, it's the, um, it's like the little mini uh, uh, varietal, like the little tiny ones. Yeah. So it's not like the big ones, but you still get a little bit of a nectar out of the, out of the, the flower. Now, are you still in the gardening type industry and, and working with? Uh, no, Plants? no, I'm not. I'm thinking about getting back into that. Um, the only thing, and this isn't a dig at, at anybody in the, in the nursery business, but it's a very hard work for not, a, not a lot of pay. Yeah. And so a lot of people, and as you know, um, like when you do this stuff, it's not for the money. It, it's, it's for, cause you love it. Yeah. You know, and, um, definitely. and, but someone's got to do it. And, um, it, it's always hard you know, at nurseries, it's like a rotating door, you know, try, trying to keep people there. Um, you know, I was there for, you know, four seasons and uh, I love it, you know, but it's it's hard for a lot of people because it is, you know, Monday through Saturday, you know, 10 months out of the year. It's it's it, from the first week. week well. Yeah. From the first week of January is when we start doing our first, uh, our first uh, tomato and pepper. Uh, we do them in the 288 plug trays mm -hmm. and the 128 plug trays. And we do thousands of those. So wow. a thousand times 288 is 288,000 individual tomato plants, Jeez. 57 varietals. So wow. it's like from the first, yeah, the first week of January until the uh, last week of November, you're working six days so a week. So it's a lot of work. Yeah. There's not, not a lot of, there's not a lot not of work, time pay. work social life balance. You yeah. Know? That's so, true. That's, so what are you doing now? Uh, right now I'm actually, uh, I'm actually you know, in between jobs right now, but I really want to get back into landscaping and, yeah. uh, and, and or nursery work or both, you yeah. know? Um, but that's where my heart's at, you know, is working outside, you know, getting paid to work outside. 
Yeah. That's just like a dream. And Tyler, you're a paramedic. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sack metro fire. Yeah. Woohoo! That's why you guys are saying all these words and I don't, I don't know what they mean. <laughs> they Garden talk. <laughs> <laughs> but you do like have an interest in plants. You're oh, just yeah. so busy. I just, like, I just you were going plants. to school mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah, you know, years. what, dr doing ambulance work uh, while you were going to school? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, for my paramedic license. Which is I like bet you're years. glad right now that you're not fighting fires like you used to. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, I think, yeah. I think a part. A part of me misses it, you know, because it's, you know, the excitement. And you're, you're just getting paid to camp and hike. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's it's hard work. It's really hard work. Yeah. And it's a young man's job for sure. I can't <laughs> imagine in, like, in California, we have so many wildfi yeah. wildfires. Yeah, yeah. The heat of the fire mm -hmm. and the heat of the actual yeah. regular, t you know, yeah. <laughs> what it yeah. is. I mean, you That's do crazy. get used to the heat to a point. But, yeah, I'd yeah, never. It's... There's a reason why I don't live in your neck of the woods. Because <laughs> at least we usually have some. Re oh, we don't need air conditioning right here. Now, yeah. yeah, open a window. You it's know, awesome. it's very rare that yeah. it's we're you know suffering from heat because we don't have air. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, my daughter lives in the warm weather as well in California, I think it's worse and she knows there. that she's not going to get a visit from me in the summertime <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when it cools off. Yeah. Then I head over there, but yeah, yeah. yeah. But well, it's so fun to talk to you yeah, and you likewise. too, Tyler. But you know, <laughs> yeah. I don't have as much to say. About <laughs> I've known him all his life <laughs> and before. <Yeah. laughs> you don't, but you have an interest, though. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love a little herb garden. Yeah, yeah. Well. and so a lot of people who are into gardening and plants are also very artistic. Any of that in you? Oh, well, we did go to, uh, we went to this awesome place up in, uh, up in Roseville called Petroglyph and you actually, it's, a uh, uh, it's like a pottery place and you, you buy, you buy the pottery and you can paint it and glaze it over oh, that'd be cool. and do all that. Yeah. I, was like, I was like, I can't do this. I'm not artistic. And then I, you are, sure though. enough, we started painting, and I'm like, oh, you know. So like, you never knew that about you. I never you. knew that. I, and I, it's interesting you say that because I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should. It's like, very therapeutic doing artistic uh, kind of time. things and gardening too. Oh my gosh, there's like I'm all kinds music, of. Though. Oh, I love music. Yeah, I Do drum. You play? I play drums. Yeah, so oh, I. See, so I've that never makes been sense. able to play anything. Yeah. You might. You never know though. You might not have found. I've instrument. tried. You do the tambourine. <laughs> I've know? tried the piano. I've tried the guitar. <laughs> it's like it just the brain. The waves to the fingers. Yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> you, you might be a percussionist because I can't. I couldn't play any uh, any kind of piano, anything with a fret or a key. Mm. I can't. I still can't play. But then I got behind the drums and I was like, oh, this makes sense. Okay. And then all I'm my the friends. I can play guitar, but I can't. Okay, do you sing to yeah. your plants? Uh, no, um, because I want them to live. You know, I don't want to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I've been known to sing to my plants. People they say about it. talking to your plants. I don't oh, really yeah. talk to them so much as like, unless I'm cursing at them because they're not <laughs> doing what I want them to do. But I, I have been known to sing to, and I won't ever do that on YouTube. <laughs> but. I'm just, a, I'm a professional shower singer is what I like. To <laughs> maybe yeah. at a thousand subscribers. Yeah, get. maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like and subscribe and we'll sing, we'll sing to the plants for you. No. Yeah, so you, ha you said you're going to have your mom and dad or mom subscribe. Oh, yeah. Because she likes yeah. gardening. And my dad too, because he... You know, he loves my dad. I'm going to have to come up and do a YouTube video at your mom's garden. You should. That'd be awesome. <laughs> make it look nice. <laughs> yeah, no, I've got, a, I've, got, I've got my work cut out for me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I really, and it's funny you say that because I have to, it's been so hot up there, but like Loomis is, um, where we live, where my parents are in Loomis is actually part of the Mandarin Trail. It, the Mandarin capital of the world is actually five minutes from Loomis. It's in a town called Penryn. Penryn and Newcastle, California are the... It's the Mandarin, uh, Mandarin, Clementine, Tangerine. Uh -huh. You know, there's a town up there I grew up in called Orangevale. Yes. Citrus Heights. I didn't know that's why it was Citrus. called that. Though. Right. Yeah, they're oh. called that. The, the soil, the acidity of the soil and how the soil is. You can grow blood oranges, lemon, grapefruit. Well, I'm going to have uh, to come tangerine. visit your mom's garden, I'm telling you, and come yeah. see what you guys have growing. Yeah, it's it's a cool, cool area. But I, I love to, to visit other soil. people's gardens. Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I just want to say is that you guys caught me with my pants down as a gardener. I'm half mulched. <laughs> I think it looks great. I, I think it looks awesome. You know what I'm saying? Like mulch, 
Mulch just covers a whole multitude of sins. <laughs> yeah. When your garden is looking dry and drab and dreary, you put some fresh mulch on it and just yeah. it just looks so much better. It's yeah. good for the plants too. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, Visually. Like you throw some down and you hope that like, you know, it'll smother some of the weeds too. You Although the mulch can, when it break, starts to break down, steal nutrients, I think, from plants. Yeah. So you it have to like bit, add blood you know? meal or things like that to help. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was I. I was thinking about that. They're catching me with my pants down, <laughs> half mulched out there. <laughs> but it got me going. First thing this morning, I started. I'm like, I got to get some more mulching work. done. <laughs> I got to do this. I got to do that. <laughs> it's been really a lot of fun having you guys on the channel today, yeah, and your mom's going to be thrilled because she doesn't get to see you that often. So, hey, mom. <laughs> and your mom too. She probably hey, mom. <laughs> she sees you all the time. Oh yeah, she's yeah. She's like, subscribe oh. anyway, mom. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it was a lot of fun having you guys come visit yeah. the garden. I'm glad you got to see it. Thanks and, for having us. Um, talk, talking plants with another plant lover mm. is fun. And I had a, did a video about how giving gardeners are because we love yeah, to share seeds and plants. Starters. And we oh, yeah. We Here, just love to. <laughs> so if you ever need help as a beginning gardener, you just get with some gardeners uh, in your neighborhood who you can tell like to garden because they're out there all the time. They'd be more than happy to talk about their gardening experience and help you out. I'm telling you, gardeners are giving people and they oh, love yeah. to share about plants. So It's like a currency for us, huh? Yeah, Here, take is. this cutting. <laughs> Here, wait. My friend uh, Alex actually uh, up in, he's a great, he's like you. He's a, he's, he's a, he's a self-made gardener and he's got two green thumbs. And he gave me a cutting of, uh, it, I think it was I don't know if it was barbecue rosemary or it was some kind of variety of uh, rosemary that I didn't have. And he gave it to me, a little cutting like that. And it's, it's huge. I mean, it's almost like a, it, it's a, it's more than a bush. It's like a, it almost looks like an oleander bush. It's huge. Did and, you trade him? Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, so what I did is I, I gave him some, um, all I did was cause I had a bunch of leftover plastic, um, from working at, at Matt Studios, you know, you bring, you get, you buy plants and you bring them home and whatever and get a good discount, you know, and, uh, I had a bunch of press fit four inch and some little, uh, some little plug trays that he could do some starters in. And I just brought them to him cause I'm like, dude, I have these like no problem. And he was like, well, I have to give you something <laughs> as, as she That's said. That's a gardener. It's right? like, we constantly got to be like me and my neighbors, like <laughs> I'll go to a nursery and I'll take them something that I saw that I know that they would like, you know, right. and they've given me tons. They were one of my big inspiration when I first started gardening my neighbors a couple That's doors awesome. down and he gave me starts to a lot of plants and still is giving me stuff like and so I, like you want to give back and yeah. you're like oh i got some of this here take some of this it's but like a yeah bartering thing. It's, it's it is fun it's yeah. a lot of gardening is a lot of fun and it's a it's a cool community so mm -hmm. everybody's really helpful in gardening and yeah, so it's been a lot of fun talking gardening with you, yeah, and likewise. I can't wait to come see you. I'm inviting myself over to your mom's house. <laughs> oh, yes, please. Give me a little bit of time. <laughs> I got to get out there with a the shovel and pickaxe. I, I, I rode a till by hand. Oh, my god. I gosh. turn it all by hand, and, wow. uh, and then I got to put some soil conditioner probably in there, break up some of that loam. I like to seed it with uh, worms, too, like live worms, because they aerate the soil, and they leave their castings, and, yep. and they, they make it like uh, the black gold. Yeah, as you say. So I, I haven't done that in a couple of years, and I think that's why it's suffering. It's kind of rehardened. So you know? I'll just like say, "Hey, Josh, I'm coming," and then it'll get you out there because that, yeah. that's what happens. <laughs> you, 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 you <laughs> help me, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for watching today and listening to our garden chat. We really appreciate it. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and share with your friends. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.